can serve as a painful reminder of what's truly important in our lives. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of families that pull together in their darkest moments on Rescue 911. We begin on December 13th, 1992 in Rogers, Arkansas, as Mike and Karen Hall and her nine-year-old son, Andrew, were looking forward to spending their first Christmas together since Mike and Karen's marriage the summer before. Down to sleep, I pray over my soul to keep. God bless mom and dad and Andrew, that's me. And no one else in the world knows. Every night, my mom and dad say my prayers with me. And I say goodnight, and then they shut the door. I just figured that I'd get a drink. There was a lot of smoke. The Cub Scouts taught me to get out of the house very quickly and call the fire department. Mom! Dad! I yelled for Mom and Dad so they would wake up. County 911. When the call for help came in, Rogers Police Officer Brian Walters happened to be in the dispatch center. Washington it was only a couple of miles away okay. from the police station. Okay. I thought if I could get there, I could contain the fire with my fire extinguisher until the fire department arrived. 104, 111, 04. We had a My aunt is a semi-invalid, and so I was making sure that she got out of it. Then I realized that I didn't see my husband on the front of the house. I was panicked. The fire had really become an inferno. I was scared pretty much because I thought she might get trapped by the flames. Continue. I was under the assumption that it was a very small fire, and my first reaction was just, my God, this thing is huge. When a fire broke out while the Hall family was sleeping, nine-year-old Andrew, his mother Karen, and her aunt managed to get out of the house. But when Karen realized her husband Mike was still inside, she made the mistake of running back into the burning building. The flames were coming out of the window. We got ready to cross the street! I was thinking that my stepfather wouldn't make it out in time. Officer Walters arrived at the scene in less than three minutes. I was under the assumption that it was a very small fire. And my first reaction was just, my God, this thing is huge. When the wife approached me, she was hysterical, screaming, he's in there, he's in there. But I couldn't imagine anyone living through something like that. Since I couldn't enter the front or the side of the structure, or the back was the only alternative. It was very hot. <coughs> Real hard to breathe. There was lots of black billowing smoke and heat, and that Mike was still in the house was very frightening to me. I can't get in there. I asked her which room he was in specifically. This one here. I told her to go around and wait for the fire department. Okay. So I didn't want her to see her husband in the condition that he may be in. I could not see in the room at all. Please! I screamed several times, but there was no response. Within a few minutes, units with the Rogers Fire Department arrived. The living room area was fully involved. It was getting ready to go into the roof area. 
when it gets into there, the rest of the house can go real fast after that. Firefighter Billy Bell headed around to the bedroom window. Ronnie's in this one. Must be in here. The flame had not made it back to the bedroom area, but there was enough heat and smoke that I knew it was getting close. So I knew there wasn't a lot of time. well over a thousand degrees at the ceiling area. I honestly wouldn't have said that he was alive for sure at all. I found the body! Toward my voice, Bill! I drug him to the window. From there, it was just kind of a horse and push until I could have some help from the outside. When I heard that they had found Mike, I asked if I could go back and see him. They told me that, that I couldn't. I was put into one of their vehicles, which had a radio, and did hear that Mike was in respiratory arrest, which frightened me. Wesley Lewis was the first paramedic to reach the victim. With that intense heat and that much smoke, I was not expecting to find a uh, survivor. I figured it would be more of a coroner call. He had actually quit breathing, but he did have a pulse. And we opened his airway and he took two gasping breaths. <laughs> I was very surprised to see him making an effort to breathe, and I hope that he did have, have a chance, at least. At St. Mary Rogers Memorial Hospital, emergency physician Lee Fincher took over Mike's care. The patient was deeply unconscious. He was unresponsive. He was in critical condition at that time. Ready? Ready. The major thing we're concerned about is the damage done to the lungs and to the brain from lack of oxygen. It was a possibility that he would not make it out of the emergency room. It was also a possibility that he would make it out of the emergency room as a breathing body with a heartbeat, but no brain functions left. It was hard to see him laying there, having his life sustained by machines and told him how much I loved him, told him that he was going to make it, you know, that he was a strong man and would fight. By the third day after the fire, Mike was much improved, but he was still unable to speak. He wrote a note that said, who saved my life, and my mom wrote, Andrew did. Mike wrote, you know, thank you for saving my life to Andrew. Tears were in Mike's eyes, and Andrew started tearing up also, but he was trying to be so brave that he, he turned towards the window so his dad couldn't see him cry. Didn't you guys just hear the, that uh, rifle? One year later, Mike Hall and his family have a lot to be thankful for. The best thing that came out of this for me was the, the way it brought Andrew and I closer together, more like a father and son. He has the qualities to be a very good father, and another good quality that he has is to go fishing very well. Well, honey, they'll have to be right up at the very top. When you go through something as devastating as this, you realize how inconsequential material things are. Make the time for your family, make the time for your friends, because that's what's going to be there when everything else is gone. And, and I sure know that from experience. An investigation of the fire subsequently yeah, determined like that it was caused by a spark oh, from an extension cord. Yes. If you have smoke detector, make sure they work properly. If you don't have smoke detectors, get one. It feels wonderful to have my little boy help save our family, save my life. I'm very proud of Andrew. <laughs> if Andrew hadn't known what to do, we all would have died. It makes me want to give him a hug every time. I love him so much. Good. 
next. Help. Is he breathing at all? No, he's Did not he... even awake. She said he can't breathe, indicating this is a critical emergency and we're going to have to move quick.